All right, before we get going tonight, I got some letters in the mail here. All right, this guy here, Paul Snyder, moved into the neighborhood. And uh, uh, this guy here <coughs> moved in the neighborhood, Keith Sylvia. And uh, this one, Eric Porte. These are uh, sex offender notices. They moved into our neighborhood here. And I wanted to lift them up in prayer. Lord, uh, these sex, sex offenders, child molesters, pedophiles, any kind of sexual sin, I know is uh, rooted in childhood rejection and it's rooted in uh, uh, lust demons. I know these people don't understand that. I know that the legal, the courts, the system that tries to treat these people, I know the Christian systems that try to treat them, they don't understand it either that these poor people have lust spirits. And these spirits uh, push people to do things they don't want to do. And they give people desires that they don't want to have. Desires to have sex with children. Sex with animals. Uh, sex with dozens of people. Whatever it is. I know this is all caused by sin and child abuse and dysfunctional families. And it's all caused by evil spirits that get into their bodies. And these three guys here don't understand that. So I'm lifting those men up to you right now, Lord. And I'm asking you to hunt them down and bring them right here. I want all these sex offenders right here. I want the whole neighborhood. Every sex offender in the neighborhood, Lord, I want them all standing right here. The mercy line. And I know that you love them and you care about them. I know you can heal them. I know you can deliver them. I've seen you do it. And so I'll pray for mercy on them. They're stuck in the legal system. And it's a nightmare in that system. And it really hurts people. The sex offender system is very painful to go through. And it does not work. They're never cured. But you can cure them. So I pray you'll please forgive them and help each one of their victims. Whoever they touched, whoever they fondled, whoever they molested, I know the spirits took that person too. So I pray for these three men right here in the name of Jesus. I lift them up to you, Lord. They can be delivered and they can be healed. And when they are delivered and healed, they will have a tremendous testimony of victory and healing. These, these men are 1 Corinthians chapter 1 Christians for you, Lord. God has chosen the foolish things of the world. God has chosen the things that are despised, the things that are rejected. God has chosen them. And here's three for you, Lord. First Corinthians chapter one. Couldn't be any better. These three guys right here. Perfect guys to be faith healers and deliverance ministers in the kingdom of God. Three perverts converted to Christ. That's tremendous testimony. Awesome potential here with these child molesters. Just great. This is fantastic. Amen, Lord. All right, they sent me those notices, so uh, I like to pray and ask God to bring them here. Thank you for praying for them. Okay, November 30th is our seminar on divine healing. Uh, here's our new website. I need to take that off there. It's not new anymore. I am still on the radio every day on 1010 a.m. and I'm always on the radio 24 7 on on the FM on the website on the FM.com I'm also on secular uh, internet radio every Sunday night my listening is back up to 2300 so I'm whittling it back up to the top again I was down to three something after I was in the hospital so. make it a comeback 
do you shop on Amazon? Just put in smileamazon.com, put in our name, and they will pay us when you buy something. I buy, uh, for example, all the books in the in the bookstore. I buy off of that, and then they reimburse us 1.2 percent. That kind of thing. I mean, it's not millions of dollars, but it helps a lot. You know, it pays utility bills, stuff like that. We're grateful for anything we get. Good Search does the same for us. If you use them instead of Google. House of Healing AZ, this will be on there tonight, recorded, ready to go. These miracle lists are still available. You can send me an email or you can pick one up off the website for self-deliverance at home. I got two emails this week about new terror cells that went in. People uh, started picking off the sick people at their church. Terrorizing the devil. It only takes two or three people to start a terror cell, according to the Bible. It's right in that verse. And thank you for your donations. The boxes are on the doors or on the website. Thank you. Okay, I'll be in Tucson pretty soon now. Yeah, the 10th, November 10th, we'll be down there. And then uh, we'll be in Flagstaff the next weekend, Saturday, at the Oasis of Hope Church. Only a uh, seminar. The Skid Row uh, meeting will probably be on November 8th. Uh, for those of you who know anybody who lives in the LA area, yeah. December 8th. Did I say November? I said November. I'm doing better with the mic. <laughs> All right. Let's go over some review tonight. It's very important. I have several people here tonight that need this review, and uh, then we'll see how to work it out. All right. The devil is uh, genetically negative. He wrote the book on negativity. He's very good at it. And the reason he uses chronic negativity on Christians is because he's trying to take over their Christian life, and he can do that if he gets what? Yes, if he gets your mind, they can take you, and they will take you. For example, uh, before the flood of Noah, that is exactly what happened. They were Their minds were taken, only this time it was all over the planet. And it says in Romans 1, they did not re like to retain God in their knowledge, so God gave them over a docimus, that means a wasted, useless mind for the things of God. They had reached a point where they had a reprobate mind. A reprobate is a person who has zero capacity for the things of God. That's a reprobate. Somebody completely gone. And God gave the whole planet over to a reprobate mind. And then it says in Romans 8, those people who are after the flesh do phroneo, mind the things of the flesh. And that, that's a Greek verb there, and it means how you think. How you think. People who are after the flesh focus on, think about the things of the flesh. Those people who are after the spirit Focus on and think about the things of the Spirit. For the carnal mind, Romans 8, uh, phronema is at enmity, ekthros, hostile against God. Okay? A carnal mind is hostile to God. And it cannot be subject to the law of God. It cannot be. So no matter how much they try, they cannot do it. No matter how hard this guy tries, these three guys here, they're not going to be able to stop these perverted thoughts from coming into their minds. Their minds are fleshly. Their minds are carnal. And it can't be stopped. Human beings cannot stop it. They cannot fix it. It is not subject to the law of God, and it cannot be. 
Romans 12. Do not be conformed to this world or age, I own, but be transformed. Metamorpho means to morph. Morph your mind into the mind of Christ. How do you do that? By renewing your mind. Anachinesis means to renovate it. You have to renew and renovate your mind into the mind of Christ in order to serve God. And if you don't do that, nothing's going to work. It's not going to work. You can go to 50 different deliverance ministries and 25 different healing ministries. And when you're done, you will still have demons and you will still be sick. After you go through deliverance, if you do not renew your mind, the spirits will just simply get back in later. And then you could end up in worse condition than you were before you came originally for help. Why? Renewing of the mind, renovating it, and a kinesis is more important than anything else. When you renovate your mind, you start to think like Jesus thinks. Okay? The devil took him up to the top of the pinnacle of the temple, 700 feet up. That's a ways up. Okay? The only people that could have stood that was. The Lord or people with uh, ADHD. You ever seen those YouTube videos of the guy skateboarding off a mountain? Those guys have no fear, but that's demonic. That's a the demons gave them no fear. Okay? They have no fear of death. They have no fear of injury. They take incredible risk with their lives. Jesus stood up there and. At 700 feet up, the natural reaction would be, wow, I could fall. If I fall, I could splat like an egg. Where did I get those thoughts? Well, those were human thoughts. I was thinking natural human things because while I'm standing there 700 feet up, my mind has not been renovated. Jesus' mind was renovated, and he said, Thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Whereas I would have been, whoa, petrified. If you do not renew your mind or renovate your mind into the mind of Christ and start to think like Jesus thinks, your Christian life ends up bankrupt. It all turns into a stinking failure. It drives you nuts. What I just went over was the root cause of backsliders. Backsliding is caused by people who do not renovate their mind. They don't think like Christ. All through the New Testament, this simple illustration constantly bashes us right in the face. There's 10, 15,000 people here. They've been listening to teaching all day. They're starving. And Jesus said, well, we can't let them walk home. They'll faint. Let's give them something to eat. And the disciples, right down to the man, said, what are, you doing? are you nuts? We're clear out here in the there's there's no circle K's here. Where are we gonna get food? Well, so there's a kid here with a sack lunch, but Philip goes, What good's that? Now see, this simple concept is being shot at us continuously all the way through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's on it's almost on every page. The disciples had not renovated their minds, they thought like Carnal people think. They were looking at the natural and saying, hey, this is impossible. Jesus then pushed them a little further and said, you, you feed them. Okay. The great thing about the Holy Ghost, he's so gentle with you. 
you can screw up 500,000 times and 500,001 time he wants still wants to help you. It's it's crazy. He's always there to you feed him, he said. And then he showed them how to do it. Why? Jesus saw the people fed because he had the mind of Yahweh. The disciples had not renovated their minds, so they naturally thought on a carnal level. And since their minds were carnal, they could not think of feeding 10 or 15,000 people. They couldn't do it. The carnal mind is not capable of serving God. It won't serve God. It by nature serves negativity, demonic negativity. That's why the accuser of the brethren, the devil, has his trump card with him all the time, pointing his finger at you, hurling accusations at you, true or false. As long as it's negative, he's okay with it. If you legitimately screw up, he will hurl that at you because it's negative. He did it to Jesus. Peter walks up to him and says, hey, you're not going to go to the cross. You're staying here. We're going to make you a king. We've already got a beautiful castle picked out for you. It's really nice. Peter's mind had not been renovated or renewed. He was thinking carnally. Jesus, you can't go back to heaven. Stay here, please. At the day of Pentecost, after his mind was renewed, he was fine with Jesus being in glory. Now he was on the program. The carnal mind cannot serve God. It's impossible. It always defaults to something negative. That's how you can tell if something's demonic is if it's negative. If you renovate your mind, you can do what? You can do exactly what you want to do. See, this is your heart. This is your heart. Okay? You're sitting here tonight, and you have a good heart. Okay? You came here tonight to hear the word of the Lord. You didn't come here to see me. You came here to hear God's word because you have a good heart and you want to learn. And here's what you want to do. You want to know what God's will is for your life, the good will of God, the acceptable will of God, the perfect will of God. Don't you? Who doesn't? Raise your hand. Who doesn't? Not one person raised their hand. Right? That means everybody, with the exception of a couple of gutless people, are have good hearts and they want to serve God. But you cannot do it. And you will not do it. The Bible guarantees it. If you do not, and Aquinas says, renew how you think. Change how you think. It's not possible. And this little scripture, so fantastic, is illustrated time after time all through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He's hanging on the cross. The unrenewed carnal people walk by. Ha! Look at that. If you were really who you said you were, come down off that cross and let's get this thing done. They weren't, their minds were carnal. Jesus didn't come down off the cross. He didn't want to come down off the cross. He too busy saving our souls. Why? Jesus had the mind of Jehovah or Yahweh. He Thought like father thought. And if you don't do this, you will never find the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God in your life. You can find your will. People do it all the time. What are you going to do with life? Your life. They ask every kid. What do you want to be? That's what they ask. What do you want to be when you grow up? There you go. I want to be a doctor and a lawyer. Nobody answers that question as I'd like to be a drunk or a whore. Or, no, <laughs> people fall into that through sin and demons. They start out differently. 
I want to I want to help people. I want to do this. I want to. They a kid a kid generally speaking has things they want to do that are productive or positive or something. Very few people. Now there are some, you know, gangsters. Those kids grow up. Yeah, I want to. I want to be a don. I want. I want to murder people. I want to be a hitman. But that's a small percent. Most people say, "Well, I'm going to be this in life, and that in life, and this in life, and that in life." And that's a, that's the devil. He's telling you, "Hey, you want to be this and that and this and that," so that he sets out to disappoint you. You know, I always wanted to do this, God. I never made it. Why not? I got married. Okay. I I, I didn't go to that school. I didn't accept that offer. I didn't. And then the devil comes in with the regret syndrome. He starts pounding you with regrets like a speed bag in the gym. Why? The person hasn't renewed their mind. You see, when your mind's renewed, you know in your heart that everything you did in your past that was a failure has nothing to do with you right now. The only thing that has anything to do with you right now is your God-given future but if you haven't renewed your mind your mind by default flips back to a regret a failure a loss an abandonment a screw-up it goes by default because the carnal mind cannot serve God it is not possible this isn't me it's here People who have renewed their mind, take Wigglesworth, for example, he was absolutely flabbergasted when a miracle didn't happen. He couldn't believe it. We're the opposite. You got healed? For God, unbelievable. Jeez! That's amazing! We haven't renewed our minds. To understand that healings are to be expected yeah. not be surprised about the carnal mind is hostile to God it's hostile to God it's not neutral yeah when I was raising my kids my daughter Tara the oldest one she was about two or so. Uh, started roaming around the trailer. I used to be, uh, I lived in a trailer at one time. Like most crackers. <laughs> and she would be pulling stuff off the counter, picking stuff, going into that, digging into that. And I never taught her to do that. She was just doing it by default. Even a child's mind defaults to jacked up. You must use your free will and renew your mind. It doesn't come by osmosis. It doesn't fall out of the ceiling. You don't get healed and have a renewed mind. Nobody heard that. You can't pray and ask God to give you a renewed mind. It's renewed. My God, I got the Bible memorized. Jesus is great. I got the secrets of the universe. I know where God came from. It's not going to happen. Renewing your mind is subject to your free will. Jesus renewed his mind. Why? Because he was God? No. They found him in the temple. What you talking about Willis? He said hey, hey carnival workers Did you not know I needed to be about my father's business? What was he really saying there? I have chosen of my free will at age 12 to renew my mind like Yahweh Jesus had to renew his mind he grew in grace and stature with all the citizens of Nazareth they all 
respected him and were in awe of him. He was a tremendously bright, honorable man. This was before he got filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? His free will. It's all about your free will. <coughs> you can choose to do it. You can choose not to do it. But if you choose not to do it, understand it will not do it on its own. The carnal mind is an enemy, is hostile to God. Humans by default think negatively. A kid goes through their terrible twos and no one trains them to do it. Kids absorb negativity from the parent faster than they absorb positivity. That's a controversial statement. See, you're not born a clean slate. See? Oh, now what's going to go on the slate? What depends on my environment? No. You're born with a sin gene. You're born in sin. You are a fallen person. And later in life, you're going to need to be redeemed to break that curse of Adam and to renew your mind. It is a product of your free will, just as your salvation is. You are not forced to get saved. You were saved based on your free will. You could have gone Buddha. You could have gone Allah. But you chose Christ. You chose him. No one forced you to take you. Is this making any sense? These scriptures... If you choose to renew your mind, you will find what you really want. And that's what you really want because down deep you've got the Holy Ghost and you've got a good heart. You do want to serve God. I'm speaking for you. You do want what's right. You want the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Philippians 4. Why is Paul pounding on this? He's trying to get the Christian to renew their mind. How do you renew your mind? You use your free will. To control your thoughts and he says you can willfully of your own free will choose things to think about okay now I've got a bunch of regrets and a bunch of failures and a bunch of losses I can choose to nail those to the cross and go forward or I can choose through a pity party to go back to my failures and my losses it's all your choice Now, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, this is not going to work, okay? Th these guys are not going to get cured. You're not going to get cured, and they are going to offend again. The court system knows they're going to offend again. They always, in fact, it's in the literature, pedophiles can't be cured. That's the secular view of it. They cannot be cured. I agree with them. Without the Holy Ghost, these men cannot be cured. Now, they can stop fondling kids, but that's a product of the system they're in. Could be in prison, could be in jail, could be in supervision, different things. But anyway, in their hearts, they're never cured. You can choose to think on that, or you can choose negativity but whatever you choose all of us constantly must face that fork in the road there's a crossroads you go to every single day of your life you walk down this road and bang there's two roads here and every one of us face it seven days a week you can choose to think this way you can choose to behave that way you can choose this way If you choose God's way, the miracles are down that road. The despair, the misery, the hopelessness, and the losses are down this road. If you choose to go with regrets, oh my God, I should have married him, not him. I should have gone to that school instead of this. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, that may all be true, but after you become a born-again Christian and you are a new creation in Christ, none of that matters. 
the Holy Ghost is now in charge of your future and he's got everything for you but One thing he doesn't have for you is an Android cyborg mind where you are programmed to think what he wants you to think he will not do it He won't do it He won't do it You have to choose Who's he telling this to right here? God? Is, is that what Paul's doing? Uh, Lord, come here for that one. Talk to you. Uh, my next trip to heaven, uh, what I want you to do is uh, force these people to think right, okay? Bring me down a Holy Ghost Nerf bat. I'm going to carry it to the rallies and poof, think straight. Stop with the negative thoughts. Whack! Get that ugly man out of your mind <laughs> Bang stop thinking about a pizza. No No Paul is telling the Christians this verse this is written to you and I you decide What goes on in here? Deuteronomy 28 Jehovah comes to the nation of Israel and says hey listen, I got a bargain for you. Let's make a deal You do what I tell you to do follow my commandments you follow my precepts Guess what I'll do for you and he lists all these incredible things Deuteronomy 28 everybody's read that chapter. It is incredible Here's an interesting verse in that chapter One of the benefits of obedience is what? God will make you the head and not the tail Why did he say that because the head decides where the tail goes? The head is the thinker the tail is the follower If you do not renew your mind you are the tail you must follow where your hostile mind carries you Because you cannot fix it yourself you will be the head, not the tail. The tail doesn't decide where you're going. The tail only follows you. See? In my house, my wife got us a new dog. A Havanese. You ever heard of that? I never had either. Didn't even know what a Havanese one. I thought it was a disease. <laughs> This dog has a little tail that curls up like that depending on its mood It straightens out based on another mood It goes different directions based on that mood. What mood? What's going on in the dog's head? What's going on in that dog's head? 90% of the time my wife That dog follows my wife around <laughs> But the tail has to go wherever the Havanese, that's a real name. You don't believe me, do you? I didn't either. You never heard of it? Well, let's get something wrong with the gal. Listen, the head leads, the tail follows. And if you don't renew your mind, the demons will lead you. And you will follow. And you will have hell to pay. That's why Paul said you got to renew your mind and think on these things Here it is. It's all based on your mind These three guys when they were young probably teenagers probably Junior high maybe grade school. They started to have demonic thoughts come into their mind that were perverted thoughts sensual thoughts sexual thoughts About kids Okay what happened to them? How they end up in prison? How they end up on this sheet here? How they end up with me talking about them? Those thoughts were never taken captive. They were never killed. They were allowed to grow and they grew to fruition. The, uh, the carnal mind is at enmity against God, hostile to God. It is not subject to the law of God. God, neither can it be. I'm holding proof in my hands. It started out as a thought, one thought. 
age 11 age 8 whatever it was and That thought was not removed out of the person's mind this guy and that thing started to grow and then another thought was added another thought came in at then another one the devil the Bible says do not give place to the devil. That's the Greek word tapas. It means area It's where we get our English word topography. That's a guy who's addicted to maps Those guys are weird You are not to give place or any area in your mind to the devil if you do he is a greed ridden freak he wants more land he doesn't want that much now he wants this much now he wants that much he is insatiable he never quits he wants all of it until he completely takes your mind over and you end up with a serious mental illness Or dead Thank you. it started with a thought all these things in your future your destiny your marriage your health name it name a subject is all based on what you do with your thinking pattern phronema how you think your thinking pattern The Word of God and the Holy Ghost will renovate your mind and a kind of to think like Jesus trust me if you think like Jesus you're gonna win if you think like a carnal person man, it's over for you and you don't even know it your destiny and your future is in your hands it's not in God's hands. God already has it for you. You didn't even hear me. Your destiny and your future is already in Father's hands. He's got it right there. Whether you get it or not, it's up to you. It's not up to God. See, God already said yes. The devil, he says no all the time. Then you've got to come to the crossroads and determine am I going to go with a no or am I going to go with a yes? Who has to face that 100% of all human beings You know with the exception of a mental disability or something every normal human being has to face these crossroads and make that choice of their own free will. Am I going to go that way? Am I going to go that way? And there it is. Everybody's on that road, and everybody comes to that. Which way will they go? Well, it depends. Has a person renewed their mind? Have they not renewed their mind? Are they still a carnal Christian? Let's check it out. The dying leper here in Matthew 8 is a textbook example of what I'm talking about tonight. Jesus came from down from the mountain, all kinds of people following, and behold, there came a leper. Now, these stories in the Bible are pyramids, and they only have this much showing. They're icebergs, and only that much is out of the water. The rest of the story is not revealed. All the stories in the Bible are like that. Okay? So what I do is I fill in the stories. That's right. I have a special gifting for it. I don't know where it came from. This dying leper is living in the valley of the lepers. He is in a hopeless situation. He has nothing left. He has lost everything. He has no family, no friends, no money, no nothing. And the devil is very happy to keep him there. And has kept him there all of his all of his sickness period by giving him chronic negative thoughts some of them are true facts some of them are fabrications you've got leprosy fact 
you're contagious back if you go into town you may get stoned max correct now this is what that guy's thinking before he gets to jesus there was a war going on in this guy's mind before he even left the valley of the lepers a vicious war because if they caught you outside in general public and you were a leper you got stoned dude what do they do when they stone you well the first guy comes up with the biggest rock clunk and hits the person in the head that knocks them out then everybody else bring comes up with the other rocks and then smashes the skull open boom and then you're dead the first rock i guess was meant as somewhat of anesthesia then the rest of it was a surgical procedure either way you were gone he knew that he knew if he left secondly he had a he, he had a long walk to get to him. Thirdly, he knew he was going to run into other people. It was a terrible risk for him to take. And on his way, you know he had these thoughts in his mind. Am I going to make it? What if I find him? What if he doesn't want to heal me? What, what if something goes wrong? What if I get lost? What if I get caught? What if I get stoned? I mean, I know the devil. I know the demons. I know how they work. They would have been riddling this guy with negativity chronic negativity what was he doing there standing at the crossroads right there am I gonna go for the Lord or am I gonna go with my fears everybody you him me everybody faces it every single day not to this degree but it's still a choice He says, Lord, if you want to, Thalo means I want to, you can make me clean. There he is. He's standing at the crossroads and he goes right. What happened there? Click. For that brief period, his mind was renewed. He went for the Lord. What happened to the guy? Jesus put on his put out his hand same Greek word thalo. I want to Be clean. Why are they revealing that to us because the devil had told him the opposite Before he got there the devil had put thoughts in his mind the demons did He doesn't want to heal you. He can heal you. He's God Oh fact, but he doesn't want to heal you see and that same lie has followed us in the 21st century right here in American Christianity everybody knows God can do something they don't believe he wants to do it. it's bifurcated the scripture answers it they low I want to be clean hey this guy here he told the devil told that man no big time this guy's sitting in the synagogue. He's going to church Sunday morning, Saturday afternoon then. And before he gets there, I know what the devil was doing. He's putting thoughts in the guy's mind. So listen, you you're you're a pervert. God, you're sick. You're you know, you're an embarrassment to your family. You're a loser. You're this. I mean, this guy was heavily infected with demon. I, I know he had massive demonic symptoms. He was probably one of these guys on that sheet list. But that was his crossroads. He had. He said, "Am I going to go? Should I go? Should I stay home?" That was a fight. That was a huge battle. Where? Where's the battleground at? As Joyce Meyer says, it's in your mind. He was at the crossroads and he went right he goes to church that day well if you make the right decision now the demons are scared now we should have done better if you do what's right 
demons become fearful. Because once they start losing ground in a person, they start to get scared. I can't prove this, but I, I think it's true. Demons have assignments on people. And I think some other entities tell these other spirits what to do. And I think they give them an assignment on you, you, and you. And I think they tailor make it for each individual person. And they're told, here's what we need done with this person. Here's what we need done with that one. And this is different than that one. I want you to destroy that. I want you to tell them this. I want you to give them that. I want you to bring them this person. And they tailor make destruction for each individual. I can't prove that's true, but I believe it is. This guy decided to go right. And now, right in the middle of the service, right in the middle of the service, this demon starts screaming out in fear. Why? He'd, he'd been in that service dozens of times with him. Demons love to go to church. They go there all the time. But this morning was different. This guy made a choice for God, which weakened spirits control over him. If you will repent of your sin and do what's right, the devil's power of you, over you starts to weaken, and they start panicking. And then they counterattack. They counterattack. And here's the bad news. Things may get temporarily worse for a minute or a while because they counterattack because they're scared. And demons are like people when they get scared, they scream, ah! Humans do that. If they didn't do it, no one would ever go to a horror movie. Uh -huh. When The Exorcist came out in 1973, the news media would stand in the back of the theater and film it. And when, during certain scenes, people would leap back in their chairs and scream. When Jaws came out, people were screaming in theaters. Screaming. If you went out to get popcorn, you could hear them and they're screaming. Ah! Some guy was in a boat and he was dead and his head popped in this hole. And everybody in the theater, I saw it, leaped back in their chairs and screamed. Demons are like people. They scream when they get scared. They start manifesting when they get scared. See, they're trying to distract you. You're praying and asking God for help, and suddenly they start moving here and moving there, trembling here, twitching there. They're trying to twitch you off your prayer. And 90% of the time it works. To those people who have not renewed their mind those who have renewed their mind go oh wait a minute they're moving now i'm getting somewhere Amen. this guy had made a choice to go right and the demon on his own nobody said anything to him nobody did anything you have to notice this he just started screaming Anacrazo means to yell and yell louder. Let us alone. Jesus hadn't even spoken to him and wasn't going to speak to him. The Holy Ghost was on that man. Why? Because he chose to go right. If you choose what's right, the Spirit of God's waiting there to carry you the rest of the way. He chose right. And the demon goes, holy shoot. We don't have a throttle on this guy anymore. He's using his free will to rebel against us. What am I going to do? He finds himself in the synagogue and there, son of God. What was he doing, man? He was at the crossroad, just like you. You were there today. Uh huh. You were there today. The devil sent you some idiot today. Yeah, walked right up to you. At work, at home. And he said, the devil said, hey, say that to her. Say that to him. That's really stupid. That's hurtful. That's, that's, let him have it. Give him your opinion. Criticize him. It happened today. 
you were at your crossroads right there. Well, it's none of your business. Oh, you turned left. They're carnal Christian. Your your mind is not renewed, so you went with the carnal route and served Satan. So now you can't get healed. What's going to happen next? The devil will send you that same imbecile tomorrow. Why? Demons are creatures of habit. If something works, they will repeat it. And they keep repeating it. And what's incredible about them is they seem to have unlimited amounts of patience. They do the same stupid thing over and over. It's amazing. It's amazing. Because I can't do that. If I do something so long, pretty soon i got to stop. Man, i got to do something different. These demons don't. They just keep plucking away. Same stupid thought. Same dream. Same vision. Using the same idiots. It's a, it's a repetitive pattern because it's working. Well, it stopped working with that guy. He said, I'm going. I'm going. I'm, I'm going right. The Holy Ghost said, you're going right? I'm with you. I'll take you all the way in. The demon starts to freak in the service. What have we to do with you, Jesus? Now, have you come to destroy us? The answer to that was yes. I know you. Edu, I see who you are. You're the Holy One of God. What was that demon doing? He was panicking and having a fit and trying to kiss butt. That's right. Remember how you got your promotion? Don't raise your hand. Yeah. Remember the boss there, you Benny Mullick? Huh, you know. Some of you had to go deep to get that promotion, didn't you? Yeah, remember that? Yeah, you were kissing. Kissing it really good. Well, the demon's now trying to kiss butt. Jesus, Jesus doesn't let anybody kiss butt. He don't go for that. He don't play that. No, you're not going to compliment me and stay in that guy. He turned right. You got to go. If you turn right and do what's right, the demons have to go. Come out! It's that simple. What happened there? The guy's free will had to go first. What if he hadn't been there that day? What if he'd have gone left? We'd have never had this beautiful story. When the unclean spirit tore him, sparasso means to have a seizure. The guy falls out of the pew, if they had pews there. He falls out and has an epileptic seizure, grand mal seizure. That's the big ones. Grand mal, not a petite mal. Boom! He explodes. What was the de demon doing? Coming out. Coming out scared. Yeah, that's happened around here dozens of times. Somebody starts screaming while a demon's coming out. It's not the person screaming. It's the demon screaming in fear. Oh, my God, I lost this person. They repented. I told him not to come and listen to Brother Mike. He's a turd. Not only did they come down to see Brother Mike, they were listening to the Scriptures on the screen that that sends them into a panic and Then when they have to come out they're screaming ah there they go the person is Peaceful and calm afterward. It's fantastic to see but the point I'm trying to make is the person came first their free will goes first This guy here got all kinds of no's from the devil this had to have been a terrible fight Once again, Jesus is at church and that's where most of the demons are. And there was a man there that had a withered hand. This guy's disabled. You know, people who have outward disabilities, the demons always pound on. They say, you don't look like everybody else. You look like a freak. Uh, you're an ugly person. Nobody likes you. Nobody likes the way you look. You look stupid. It's, it's a million different negative thoughts. They go, millions of them. Well, this guy's got a withered hand, and he is at the crossroads, and he decides to go right. He chooses to come. Now they're watching Jesus, where they would heal somebody on the Sabbath day, so they might. Yes, listen. 
if you lived a perfect life never committed one sin which is who Okay, anybody else anybody here raise your hand Looking for somebody that's had a perfect life is my wife still here there is a candidate honey uh, Okay, I didn't see any hands go up. So I'm gonna assume from that Research that you have not lived a perfect life I'm gonna tell you something if you had if you had there will still be people around to criticize you and accuse you even if you do everything right all the time So that means since you do not do everything right all the time. No offense You can just be comfortable with people accusing you of things because it's normal yeah. It's normal if you grew up in a family It's normal if you're married it's normal if you work somewhere It's normal if you're not dead in a cemetery If you're alive no matter how good you are someone will always criticize you That's fine It's all good Because it's normal Jesus who had never committed a sin is now being criticized And he said to the man with a withered hand what happened? Amen. He was healed. Why? The man chose first. Shall I go today? Or stay home where it's a little more comfortable? See, sometimes when you go right, you have to get out of your comfort zone. American Christians, in their useless condition, are comfort driven saints. Comfort trip <clears throat> when I When we opened the deliverance center Rick got a place for us Kelly and Arnie and the crew renovated it at the beginning We had a giant staff meeting over these chairs See that chair? See that chair? That chair generated a staff meeting. Big one. There were some people that didn't like those chairs. I experimented with the chairs. I sat in chairs. I roamed around. I bounced my fanny in them. That was when I had a fanny before I went in the hospital. Now the thing disappeared. But anyway, I'm sitting here. And after physically examining the chair, after visually examining the chair, and after looking at the price of the chairs, I decided. To go with these chairs despite the fact that there was opposition in the staff meeting to those chairs I took them because they felt comfortable and Because of the type of ministry we have here. They're easy to clean And obviously I made the right choice and those who were in opposition of it. We prayed for them. They're not healed But American Christians have to have these kind of chairs. They want Comfort see if I had brought benches in here with no padding I'd be preaching to Kelly That's it at the mega church, everybody's got to have comfort. At the movie theater now, you don't go to a movie theater anymore. You go to, they have easy chairs where you sit in there and you prop your feet up. They're padded, glass holders, everything. Unbelievable. 
So is the ticket price to that movie. It's unbelievable. Can you imagine? You could be at a matinee years ago for two fifty, two bucks. Now it's like eight bucks for a matinee. And it's scary, but you get comfort. See? That's similar to the prosperity doctrine. See? If you don't have a prosperous looking facility, then that prosperity doctrine can't be sold. If you've got a rat hole church, you can't sell prosperity to the sheep and the other idiots that come in trying to straighten out their lives because they won't renew their minds. Oh, that one, that one died. And he said to them, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath or evil to save life or kill? And they were holding their peace. What happened to that guy? Of course. He got healed, but Jesus was angry at them. Boy, that's interesting, isn't it? God got angry at those religious people. Wow. Why was he angry at them? Their hearts were hard. Here's a guy totally disabled. He's broke. He can't work. He has to live off the gratuity of others. The guy's in a depression because his hands and arms jacked up. And nobody cares. They were trying to accuse him of having compassion on someone. That triggered God's anger. It didn't have anything to do with the Sabbath. He was grieved. Sulapeo means to be sorrowful or be afflicted with sadness. He went, check this out. Jesus was a very emotional person in a good way. He went from anger within seconds to sorrow. And that's exactly how Yahweh is, isn't he? His anger lasts like that, and he goes right back to compassion. Why? Because their hearts. Horuses. What's that mean? That's where we get our English word. Horuses, callus. Calluses. The callus, you can't feel right have you ever seen people with big calluses on their feet that's growth <laughs> but you can stick a needle in a callus it doesn't hurt and you can stick a sad sick disabled person in the heart of someone who's calloused over they don't feel it Why? They have not renewed their mind. They have not chosen right. They went left. Stretch out your hand. Boy, the guy's at another crossroads here. This is an embarrassing spot to be in. He's standing out in front of everybody. Now, here's somebody who's disabled, who's self conscious anyway. And he pulls the guy out in front of everybody. What are you trying to do? Embarrass, embarrass the poor guy? No, he's trying to point out that this guy is my next Holy Ghost evangelist for this town. Here he is. He's standing right here with a withered hand. He's in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You people are not, he said. He could have stayed in his seat. Or he could have sat back down. Stick your hand out in front of everybody. Dude, I wear this thing over it because I'm embarrassed over it. Hello? People who have disabilities are embarrassed how they look, even if the disabilities are fabricated. Allah, Michael Jackson. He was embarrassed with his face and the color of his face. His dad abused him when he was a child, and he had this deep seated resentment. And fear of growing up looking like his dad and he had his dad's nose 
And when he looked in the mirror, he always saw his dad. His dad was black, black. And he had that big nose. And Michael thought in his mind, the demons told him, hey, you look like your dad. So he had to lighten his skin. He had 15 surgeries on his nose. Why? Because he liked a skinny nose and white skin. No. He didn't want to look in the dad. mirror anymore and see his dad. He was embarrassed of his disability. He had a self-imposed imposed demonic fabricated disability. His face. This guy had a real disability. And Jesus said, stick your hand out there. <coughs> Listen, if you want to go right, you're going to have to go down a road where you have to step out of your comfort zone. A week ago, a woman sent me a Facebook or an email saying they wanted to come for deliverance again. And I said, well, just come down Friday night to the service. Oh, I don't want to do that. I, I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. It scares me. The people are all going through deliverance and some people are acting this way and some act that way. And I said, hey, it's a miracle from God. The Lord just revealed what, the, what your problem was. You have a fear of man. You have coward spirits. That's great. Thank you for revealing that. I was so happy. She wasn't, but I was. Sometimes... If you go right, sometimes that's not the easier road, and sometimes that's out of your comfort zone. And American Christians don't like that. They like wonderful chairs to sit in. They like comfortable fannies. Even we who don't have a fanny anymore do like comfort in our fannies. And they don't want to be pushed out of our comfort zone. Wigglesworth was an expert on human comfort zone. If someone came up for prayer and he told them, he prayed for him, he said, you're healed, now start walking. And they didn't do what he told them. He helped them get out of their comfort zone. He pushed them. Now, we don't push people around here because of personal injury lawyers. <coughs> There's several of them that are near this facility, so we don't shove anybody around here. But the point he was making was, you have your miracle, you must step out of your comfort zone to see it fulfilled. Stick your hand out there in front of everybody. That took some guts. That was a that was a long reach for that poor guy. And guess what? Bang. He's healed. Whole as the other. Let's close out with this then. Wow. The devil was hitting poor blind Bartimaeus with thoughts you can't believe. This guy was in a depression you, would, you can't even imagine. Every day, every stinking day, his family would lead him down to the corner like a baby and then they would tell him to sit there and they hand him a pottery cup you know he probably had a construction career or something before he went blind the guy goes down there can't see his kids anymore can't see his wife got to be carted around by hand some strong powerful man that used to work for a living, has now carted everywhere, humiliated, embarrassed, depressed, down. Here, Dad. Sit here, Dad. I'll be back to get you tonight. Here's your cup. Here's your cup. Here's your cup. Humiliating. Embarrassing. That guy, Bartimaeus, was a tough guy. He was a strong man. He wanted to work. He didn't want to be disabled. It's embarrassing for him. The devil had run him up to one side and down the other, humiliating him about what a man he wasn't anymore. 
I was a secular counselor for 25 years and for several of those years I worked as a rehabilitation counselor. I used to work with people that got in workers compensation accidents and most of them were men and they would come in and most of them had physical type jobs and they got hurt on the job. They blow their backs out, their elbows, their shoulders, whatever. So then the ins workers comp insurance companies would send them over to my company. It was called Impact Rehabilitation Services back in the old days. And I'd send the insurance company this huge bill. <laughs> to rehabilitate these people. I would test them, I'd counsel them, I would send them to a trade school, you know, I'd get them into a new career and so on. Well, anyway, the beginning part of the process was very tough because here you have usually uh, these guys that are physically working for a living, pipe fitters, you know, bricklayers, whatever, and they blow their back out or something. They can't work anymore. They didn't have a job as an insurance agent where, you know, you're kind of sitting around a lot or you're going and talking to people. No, these guys were physically having to work. And now they couldn't do it anymore. Well, some of them were so depressed and so despondent, they wouldn't take any other kind of a job. Their identity was wrapped up in that job. They ran heavy equipment. I was a heavy equipment operator. And I'm not going to let this rehab counselor rehabilitate me into some other career. That's demeaning to me. See? So as a counselor, I had to fight to overcome that stereotype, that thing in their mind that was saying this isn't an honorable profession to me what i was doing was honorable i i was a bricklayer i was a mason i was doing this and that and that's my identity i don't want you to send me to <coughs> trade school to learn how to do this or that what was going on there it was mental it was mental it was all negative thinking. It was all chronic negative thinking. What was causing it? I did not know at the time. I thought it was just the person rehearsing thoughts over and over, developing a habit of thinking. I didn't know there was a spirit behind it. I was ignorant. Blind Bartimaeus, hey, he had it. He used to be this physical tough guy. Now he's stuck curb with a pottery cup. I mean, this guy's down, real down. Guys at the pits. Look at that. Instead of working, he's at the highway side begging. You got to be kidding. That killed that guy to bed. That killed him to bed. At least two dozen times over the years, I've had people I've been counseling in my office. And they're going through really bad times physically, uh, financially. And it's so bad. They don't even have gas money. I mean, they used to have oodles of money. They used to waste money gambling and drinking. Party on, dude. When they were living in sin. When they were living in the Christian life, they tempered it down a little bit. But they were gambling and doing. Listen. I have offered people money. Gas money, food money, little things like that. They wouldn't take it. Why? I, I just told you. I spent years working with people hurt on the job that had that mindset that my identity is lost now. I don't respect myself. No one else respects me. I can't lay pipe anymore. I can't plumb anymore. I can't iron work anymore. I can't operate heavy equipment anymore. That's what I was. Okay. It was all negative thinking, chronic negative thinking. And he was, in their mind, too proud to try a light, lighter duty job and get some training to do some other job. Yeah, it happens a lot. This guy here is dying. He's got no choice. He's stuck on the street corner begging. And then he hits the crossroads here. He hears rumors of Jesus of Nazareth. 
already heard about him before he arrived there so when he arrived there he already had those rumors he'd already heard them stories and something in the spirit man triggered him something in here just triggered him boom that's the guy i heard about the miracle guy the messiah so he starts screaming out and many pe people the pitamao charged him to hold his peace now that's the greek word used to rebuke demons when Jesus would be, I rebuke you, I charge you, come out. That's the word. The pit of mountain. They're rebuking this poor blind guy. Once again, people have hard hearts. They don't have any compassion for people. They don't care. People, by nature, don't care. No, seriously. They don't. Most people. Some do. Some care, and they're not even Christians, of course. Obviously, they didn't care about him. Shut up, jeez, dude! Why are you yelling at this blind guy? He's got a pottery cup and he sits on the curb. Why? What are you yelling at him for? Well, he's yelling. Okay, he's right there. He's right where you are today. It happened to you today. It's going to happen to you tonight. You're at a crossroads. Are you going to get out of your comfort zone and get rid of the rest of these demons? Are you going to get out of your comfort zone and repent of your sin? Are you going to get out of your comfort zone and change? Or are you going to go left? Hey, you're going to get a choice. Bartimaeus had the choice and he did what? Yes, he screamed louder. He went right. Now, I'll give the guy, you know, I mean, it's easier to ignore people when you can't see them, particularly relatives. But he had so many people yelling at him that this took courage to go right. For you to renew your mind and do what's right, you may have to. Fight your way through other people to do it. Usually church people. Usually family members. Family members and church members do not see your call. Each person has a call from God and other people cannot see it. So they don't believe in it. They don't understand it. They don't know it. And to go with that call, you may have to Fight your way through people who have good intentions. They're not bad people. They're just ignorant. He starts yelling louder, and guess what happens? Yeah. If you go right, in spite of the uncomfortableness of it, if you go right, in spite of those people criticizing you, if you'll do what's right and change, <coughs> repent of it, the Holy Ghost will just stand right there and go, hey, he went right. I'm going right. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. For you can cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain thee. But we are to cast all our care upon him for he cares for us. If you go right and do what's right in spite of the adversity, in spite of your own cowardice, like that gal in the email, I can't go down there, I'm scared. No, I say, hey, you're going to have to fight through it. No, no deliverance appointment for you. Here's your appointment. I was fine with it. She wasn't. They called the blind man and said, hey, Tharseo, what's that mean? Have courage. What a great verse. Be of good comfort is not the proper translation. It's the same thing Jehovah said to Joshua. Be strong. Good courage. 
for as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not leave thee nor forsake thee. So be very courageous, Jehovah said to me. Why? Fear will always cause you to go left if you listen to me. It takes courage to step out of your comfort zone. It takes courage to come down and repent. It takes courage to change. Any loser can continue to do the same asinine activity. It takes no skill. It takes no ability. To be a loser is a default program. It's easy to be a loser. All these super billionaires in the secular world, they all had jobs where they got fired. Every one of them got fired. All these great athletes, almost all of them got cut from a team in junior high or high school. The coach looked at him and said, this, this guy sucks. Now they're multi-millionaires dunking left and right. Why? Man. Man. It takes courage to confess your sins and admit you've sinned and you're at fault. It takes courage to apologize to somebody. Even though they were 70% at fault, and you were 30%. Yes, sir. It takes courage to overcome the devil telling you they're 70% at fault. They should apologize to you. Hey, dude, they don't want to get healed. You do. So you apologize. It takes courage. The slang term is guts. It takes guts. Face down your drugs, cursing and swearing, porn, hatred of people, indifference toward others. It takes guts, courage to face it. It takes courage to go right. Hey, listen, there were other blind people in Jericho that day. Trust me, there were other guys that they weren't yelling. No, they went left. Somebody yelled at them, it's just quiet, that's the Messiah. Don't say anything. <laughs> we don't talk in church. And they go, oh, I'm sorry, gee, let me go back to my pot. <laughs> See, you can go back to your pot. That takes no skill and no ability whatsoever. That's a default mechanism. You just simply go back to failure. It's easy to do. To go right? No. Be, be courageous, Joshua. Be courageous. In the secular world, we call it go for it. Go for it. After all, what do you got to lose? No offense. What do you got to lose? Let me think about it for a second. Another five years of failure. Let me think about that one. Oh, God. I'm going to lose five years of failure. Hmm. I don't know. I'll call you tomorrow. What do you got to lose by just going right now instead of left? What do you got? I'll tell you what you could lose. Your sin, your failures, your losses, your mental illness, your demons, your physical illness. There's a laundry list of things you could lose, but you'll never lose them by going left. It'll never happen. Ever. So if you're going to stay left, you're going to have to plan your funeral, and I'd start doing it now if I were you. Why wait? People that go left, though, don't plan ahead. Brian Barnabas said, hey, I'm not listening to these people. I'm casting away my garment. I'm coming to Jesus. And Jesus said, phalo again, same Greek word. What's it mean? Right? I want to. 
Jesus said, what do you want me to do? What do you want? And he said, Lord, I want to receive my sight. Sozo, you are delivered from blindness. Sozo means to be delivered. It's used in dozens of different circumstances in the New Testament. Sometimes for healing, sometimes for deliverance, sometimes for all kinds of different things. You can be delivered of all kinds of different things. Sozo. Right? Your faith has delivered you. Bang. Why? He went right. He went right. Question. Are you going to go right? Dude. Man, listen. I hate to be so blunt with everybody, but you know, you're not getting any younger. And if you're an addict, you're aging at twice the rate you would have normally aged at. Okay, so you're really not getting any younger. If you have an addiction, you have shortened your life expectancy dramatically. It's time for you to renew your mind. You have to renovate your mind and think like Jesus. It's easy to do. Here's a quick tip. If you have a negative thought come into your mind, that's not God. Because God doesn't use negative thoughts to help people. You idiot, you should have done better. What's that thought? That's a condemnation thought from a demon. God would never say something like that to you. Oh, you screwed up that time. That would never come from God. If you have a negative thought, it's from the enemy. It's never from God. Negative thoughts are from spirits. They're trying to get you to go left. You say, well, I used today. Oh, you chose to go left today. The demons told you whatever they told you, which triggered wanting to use again. You went back to porn today. Oh, you went left. The demons gave you these thoughts. That caught trigger. You ran a porn. I understand that. So does God. He's not condemning you. If you're a born again Christian, there is therefore now no condemnation, crema, judgment to those who are in Christ. Okay. You don't need God to judge you. You've already judged yourself when you went to the porn. He's not going to pile on you for doing it. The devil already judged you when you chose to go left. God's not going to pile on you and judge you again. There is therefore now no judgment to those who are in Christ. If it's a negative thought, it's from the enemy. God's mad at me. He's disappointed at me. That is not coming from God. He doesn't talk like that. Hello? Uh, have you ever had somebody come to you and say, hey, you know what? I was talking to so-and-so, and here's what they said, A, B, C, D, and you go, what doesn't, wait a minute, that doesn't sound like them. Like, I know that person, and they wouldn't, nah, that, that's exactly what you should do with these thoughts. That's exactly what it is. If you have a thought in your mind, I failed too much, I can't get back. I got too many failures. I'm this, I'm that, and this. Wait a minute. Hold on a minute. No, no. I know the Holy Ghost. He would not talk like that. He would not say, no, no, no. No, that's coming from a rejection spirit trying to get me down again, trying to trigger me to use again. I know that's not God. They said to blind Bartimaeus, be courageous. Amen. Amen. He's calling for you. And God is saying that to you tonight. Be courageous. Step to the right. Out of your comfort zone. Do something you haven't done before. Fight like you have not fought before. Repent. Change. And the Holy Ghost will go right with you. All the way in.
Let's pray. Lord, thank you for blessing those three sex perverts earlier. I give you praise for that. Lord, I give you praise for these stories of these people getting miracles because they went to the right. I know that's a message for me. I know what you're saying to me. Mike, you must be courage. You must be courageous. You must go to the right. You must step out of your comfort zone. You must make sacrifices. You must be willing to change. If you are, I will bless you. I will bless you because I, I'm going to make you the head and not the tail, says the Lord. I will make you plenteous, says the Lord. You will be above. You will not be beneath. You will be blessed. When you come in, and you will be blessed when you go out. Yes, be courageous. He's calling for you. You cannot pray like a coward and get a miracle from God. You must be courageous. You must face the devil down. If you do, he'll start screaming in fear like that guy in the church. And then he'll come out. He will leave you. Your sickness will leave you. Your mental illness will leave you. God will heal you. You can get a miracle from God. If you renew your mind. Anachinesis means to renovate your mind. And think like Jesus. For we have, Paul said, the mind of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Now raise your hand now if you need your mind renovated. You've been listening to negative, demonic thoughts come into your mind and you need somebody to pray for you. Raise your hand. You've been listening to negative thoughts and you're willing to repent. Oh, wow, there's several. All right, let's, I'll just pray with you now. Dear Jesus, I am sorry from the bottom of my heart. I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart for receiving negative thoughts and believing them. It has caused me nothing but pain and sorrow and paranoia and fear all my life. <clears throat> I am so sorry for what I've done. I have had thoughts in my mind that are negative, that are false, that are fabricated. I have had coward thoughts come into my mind. And I'm asking you, come out, devil. I'm asking you to forgive me. Come on out. I'm asking you to forgive me for my demonic thinking pattern. I'm asking you to forgive me, Lord, for my demonic thinking pattern. Negative thoughts are from Satan. They are not from you. And I apologize to you for sitting around listening to negative thoughts in my mind and being a coward and going left when I should have gone right. I faced the crossroads. I made the wrong choice. But tonight, tonight, I'm going to make the right choice in the name of Jesus. I'm going to make the right choice tonight. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I command this spirit in my brain, attacking my brain with negative thoughts. I command this ugly thing. I command this ugly thing to be bound. Come out, devil. I command this ugly thing to be bound. Come on out. I command him to be bound. Come out of my head. Put your hands up on your sides of your head like this. Here, just like I'm doing here. Put your hand there. The Bible says you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That includes yourself. Streamers, put your hand on your head right there. If you've got chronic negative thoughts, cowardly thoughts, lust thoughts, self-condemning thoughts, lying thoughts, put your hand on your head. Put your hand there. Spirit, I bind your power. I bind your power by the word of God. Matthew 18, whatever I bind on this earth, come on out. Whatever I bind on this earth is bound in heaven. What I loose on this earth is loose in heaven. I loose my mind from the power of Satan. I loose my mind from the power of negative and lustful thoughts and self-condemning thoughts and self-judgmental thoughts. I bind those powers and I command you right now to come out. I command you to come out. Take a little breath and come out. Just breathe. Come on out. Come on out. Ministry team, come on forward. Minister to the people that are, are being healed right now. Come on. Just take a breath. 
Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. There they come. Come on out in the name of Jesus. Come out, devil. Come on out right now, quickly. Come out. Put your hand on your head. Satan, I command you in the name of the Lord to come out of my mind and my brain. I, I bind your power. I, I'm telling you to come out right now. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. I repent of coward thoughts. I repent of negative thoughts. I repent. I repent of listening to lies. I'm a loser. I'm a failure. I living with regrets and sorrows. Come out right now. Come out in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. By the power of the Holy Ghost, if my people called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and turn from their wicked ways. Turn from their wicked ways. Then, says the Lord, then, says the Lord, I will hear you from heaven. I will forgive you of your sin. I will heal your body. I will heal your body. Come on. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Right now. Just repent of it. Come on. Every negative thought. Every lie. Get out of there. Come out of there. Come out. If you need to be healed, come forward real quickly. If you need healing in your body, come on up here real quickly. Come out, Satan. Negative thoughts and lies. Seducing spirits. Come out of my head. I break this curse of witchcraft. Witchcraft. What's wrong with you? I want more positive thoughts. Go ahead. Put your hands on your head. Now, that's a cause by a spirit. You're listening to the spirits, right? They put a thought in your head and you receive it. Now go ahead and repent of it. God, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me for having negative thoughts and keeping them. Forgive me, oh God, for having negative thoughts in my head and, and keeping them. I'll repent of it right now. In the name of Jesus. Come out, spirit. Right now, come out. Get out of there. Get out of my head right now. Take a breath and blow. Take a breath and blow. Come on. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of my head. Bipolar, come out. Bipolar, come out. Every minister, every minister that speaks negative things to other people, that's a spirit. That's a religious spirit speaking negativity. Repent of it right now. Repent of it right now. Come out. Hurry up. Get out of there. Come out in Jesus' name. Go. There it comes. Here he comes. There he is. Keep coughing. There he comes. Coming right now. Come out. Come on out. Take a breath. Come out. There he is. Come out. Go. Come out. Come out. Go. Come out. Come out. Go. Get out of there. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Go. 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 Come out of that body right now. Come out. Go. Fear. Go. Go. Go right now. Go. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Breathe. Come out of there. Fear spirits. Come out. There they go. There they go. Fear spirits. Come on out. There they go. There's another one. Spirit of fear. Come out out of there. Come on out. Hold that. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Come on out. Come out. Come out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out. What you do is you just speak directly to the demons when you see them starting to manifest. Not the person, the demons. Okay.
And then when they fall, you try to find out what, what they're thinking and what's causing them to fall. Come on, keep going. Push. Come on, Satan, come out of me. Devil, come out. Devil, come out right now. Come, there you go. Come on out of there, devil. <coughs> come out, Satan. Yo, get out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Hurry up. Get out of my body. Get out of my body. Drugs. Sex. Drugs. Come on, go. Get out. Abuse. Rejection. Abuse. Rejection. Go. Right now, go. Fear. Loneliness. <laughs> Come on. Fear. Loneliness. Go. Come out. Get out of my body right this second. Hurry up. Come out. Paranoia. Paranoia. Come on out. Take a big yawn. Big yawn. There's one. Come on out. Just repent of your sin. Just repent of it. Be courageous. <laughs> Be strong. Be of good courage. Step out of your comfort zone. Go to the right. <coughs> Go to the right. Go to the right. Repent of it. Come on. Unbelief and doubt. Unbelief and doubt. I bind your power. Come on out of there. Right now. Yeah. Right now, come out of there. You get out of this beautiful woman of God. You come out of her right now. Every person that criticized her, yelled at her, degraded her, ran her down. You get out right now. Spirit of criticism. Come out. Come on out. Every ugly man, go. <laughs> out. Get out of there. Go now. Come out. Fear. Fear. Go. Get out of that body right now. Mind control spirits. Come out of this man. There he comes. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Every spirit that transferred into my body from him comes out now. Get out of there, go. Go. Come out. Every spirit from every man, all the men. I want them all out now. Every one of them. Come out of my legs. Food demon, come out. Get out of it, buddy. Come out, you spirit of obesity. You food demon, come out. Keep coughing, go. More, come on. Come out. Spirit of food. Come out right now. Food demon. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Go. Come out. Mind control. Come out of that body. Come out right now. Come out of that stomach. Keep coughing. Come out. Get out of the body. Go. Come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every ugly man that ever touched me, come out now. I want them all out. Go. Go now. Come out. Discouragement. Failure. Fear. Get out of that body. Go. Every perverted dream, every perverted vision, every every pornographic. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Pervert. Come out of that body right now. Get out of that body right now, I told you. Come out of there. Come, there he is. Here he comes. Get out of my body right now. Hurry up. Come on. Get up. I told you to come out right now. Come out right now. The demon's starting in childhood. Come out of this man of God. Come out of him. Hurry up. Come out. Demons from childhood. <coughs> Go. Get there. Low self-esteem. Low self-concept. Rejection. Come out. Get out of there. Come out. Get out of that body right now, you pervert. Chronic masturbation. I command you to come out. Loneliness and fear. Rejection by others. Abandonment. Come out in Jesus' name. The curse of abandonment. Go. 
the curse of abuse. Go. Come out of there. You pervert. I told you to come out of that body quicker. Come on quicker. There he is. Here he comes. There they come. Come on quicker. Quicker. Come on out now. Quicker. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Hurry up. <coughs> Get out of there. Come out. Spirit, come out of that body right now. Get out, I said. Come out, you pervert. You pervert. You pervert. There he comes. Glory to God. Here they come. Glory to God. Come out right now. Spirit, come out. Spirit, come out of there. Come out right now. Come out. Come on out. Come out of there. Out, I said. Come on there right now. Get out of that body. Come out of her stomach. Come out of there. Right there. He's right there. Come out right now. Get out of her legs. Demon of fear. Bad men. Ugly men. Come out right now. Go now. Come out. Come on out. Go. Come on. You must be courageous. You must be courageous. You must go to the right. Come out in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Come on out in Jesus' name. Come on, take command. <clears throat> Fight harder. <clears throat> Fight harder. Come on, fight harder. Say it. Satan, I hate you. Be courageous. Fight harder. Fight hard. Come on. Fight hard. Fight harder. Satan, I hate your guts. I hate your guts. I hate you. Come out. <coughs> I want you out. Get out of my body. Get out of my mind. Come out of my mind. Get out. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come on, sweetheart. Just repent. Tell the Lord you're sorry. Tell him you're sorry. Come out. Come out, the food demon. Every spirit that causes me to use food as a comfort, I bind your power. Come out of me. Come out of me. Come on out. Come out now, I said. Get out of there faster. Come out quicker. Come on out. Quicker. Come on out. Come out quicker. Can you finish that guy off? Come out right now, Satan. I'm the boss. I have free will. I'm the boss. Me. I choose. Thus saith the Lord. <coughs> Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose. Thus saith the Lord, I set before you this day blessings and cursings. I set before you this day life and death. Therefore, thus says the Lord, choose life. So you and your family may live. If you choose to go left, you and your children will die. And they will die ugly deaths. Because they will carry your demons to their grave. Your demons that you gave your kids when you lived in sin will transfer to your children. And they will suffer till the day they die. Come on, choose it. <coughs> choose now. Now. Choose. I choose for this ugly spirit to come out of me. <coughs> right now. I choose the devil. I choose Satan to leave me now. I choose this spirit of food. This spirit of this spirit of rejection. I choose him to come out of me now. I choose him to leave me. I choose for him to leave me. Get up. Get up. I choose him to leave. Go. 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 
Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out of that body. Go, Satan. There he comes. Keep coughing. Come on. There it comes. Keep coughing. Come on. Come on. Heal. Heal. Come on. Come on. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Come on. Out you go. Out you go. 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 Come on. Out. I choose. I choose them to go out. Now. I choose. I choose them to go out. I choose. I choose them to go. <coughs> go. I choose. Come on, make your choice. Make your choice. Be of good courage. Come on. Be of good courage. Come on, sweetheart. Just tell him you're sorry. That's the best prayer. I'm so sorry. Just tell him that. He'll come right to you. The Holy Ghost come right on you. you tell him you're sorry. Come on. Come on, sweet. Tell him you're sorry. Hey, I'm from Kansas, too. Just tell him you're sorry. Come on. That's all you got to do. It's simple prayers are the best prayers. Tell him you're sorry and let your tears go. Let's go. Come on. God's got wonderful plans for you, but he's not going to do anything till you make your first move. Come on. Make your first move right now. Come on. Come on, saints. Draw an eye to God, and he will draw an eye to you. You must go first. You must go first. Then he goes second. You go first. He goes second. Draw an eye to God. And he will draw an eye to you. You go first. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. God, I'm sorry. Savior. Savior, I'm so sorry. I was wrong. Say it. <laughs> Say it. I was wrong. I was wrong, Lord. I'm so sorry. Draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Come on, double minded. Double minded. Change. <coughs> repent of it. Double mindedness. Just repent of it. Come on. Let your tears go. The demons will steal your tears and you can't cry anymore. Man, you're in bad trouble, dude. You're in bad trouble. You can't cry anymore. You're in deep trouble. Let your tears go. The Bible says the Lord collects our tears and he puts them in this book. Every tear you shed for the Lord is saved for eternity. Every tear is saved in eternity. Eternity for every tear. Let it go. Come on. Let it go. Let your tears go. Right now. Let them go. God have mercy on my soul. God have mercy on me. God help me. Help me, Lord. Help. 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 Come on. Peter. Peter. Let's do a Peter prayer. Peter in the boat. Help. Help me. 
That's a beautiful prayer. Pray like Peter. Help! Help! Help me! Help me, Lord! God save me! Save me, Lord! Help! Thus saith the Lord, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and do what is right, and keep his commandments, thus says the Lord, I will put none of these diseases upon you. I put on the Egyptians, for I am Yahweh Rafka. I am the God who heals you. I am Jehovah Rafka. I am the God who heals. Come on. Thus saith the Lord. I saw a throne, a great white throne, and him who sat on it, whose face the heaven and earth fled away. And I saw the dead stand before God. I saw the books open. I saw the other books open. And whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I got news for you, honey. I got news for you. You are not to go to the lake of fire. You are not to go to the lake of fire. You've been called to heavenly places in Christ. You've been called to heavenly places in Christ. Come on. You've been called by God. Come on now. You've been called by God to go to heavenly places in Christ. You are not to die and go to hell. That is not your call. That is not your call. You are not to go to hell. <laughs> Amen. You get out of that body right now. You kundalini church demon. Come out of that body right now. You fake Holy Spirit. Come out of that body. There he is. You fake Holy Spirit. Come out of that body. Come out, buddy, you fake Holy Spirit. Come out of there. Come out of her stomach. Come on out. Come on out. Every spirit that transferred in this body from a demon infected man, every second she spent committing adultery, I break that curse off of her. Break that curse and come out. Church spirits, come out of there. Fake Holy Spirit, come out. Church demons, go. If you went through a fire tunnel, if you went through a fire tunnel, if you went through a fire tunnel, you picked up a transfer. What's going on here? I'm just working out. What's I was happening? A lady with the, I was a lady with the walker. Brother Rick prayed for me. Just, you were the lady with the walker? Remember the walker? Oh, yeah. 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 That was you? And, yeah, that was me. And then I came back and I, I, I think you called me. I don't know, but I came and I was with Brother Rick. Yeah. And yeah. Now, uh, just, what's still left in here? Okay, now let's start at the top. Yes, sir. Okay, what's the uh, worst negative emotion you have? Of what's the trigger for fear? Of everything. Who, who's the last one? 
my husband. Are you still married? What's his name? His name is Sandy. Sandy. Okay. I'm, a, Close. I'm afraid he's gonna die. Close your eyes. Oh. Okay. Has he got cancer? No. What's wrong with him? He's in the midst Attic. of a he's in the midst of a benzo addiction right now. He's okay. Seeking. Sandy's his name. Okay. Close your eyes. Take a big breath. Here we go. Lord, you see this beautiful woman standing here? I know you're thinking that when you look at her. She's beautiful. But she's been hurting your feelings because she has fear over her demon infected husband. And fear generates doubt and unbelief. And she's already received a tremendous miracle already. Yes, I have. And so I'm asking you to use that to encourage her to release her husband from her soul right now and turn him over to you 100% and stop trying to heal him and stop trying to cure him and stop trying to straighten him out. She's going to repent of it right now. Sandy. I'm going to let Sandy go. Let him go right now. Good. Have to. Thank you, Jesus. Out. Out. She cannot heal him and she cannot help him. I'm going to let him go. Sandy, come out of there. All right, take a breath and blow. blow. Sandy, come on out. Keep blowing. Sandy. Come out. Okay, keep blowing. <clears throat> Come on. Blow. Keep blowing. Sandy. Come on, that buddy. Sandy, come out. Get out of her leg. Come out. <clears throat> come out. Come out. Sandy, come out. Sandy, come out. Sandy, come out. Come out. I let him go. You speak in tongues? Yes. Go ahead. Louder. 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 Close your eyes. Louder. 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 <laughs> Streamers, you see that woman standing over there praying in tongues? She was here last week on a walker. That lady there was on a walker last week. She came in and Rick prayed for her. She repented of her sins. Now she's up walking around here. She's right over there praying in tongues. And she's releasing her husband. Sandy, be healed and be blessed. Sandy, come out of your wife right now. Sandy, go. Sandy, go. Go now. Sandy, come out of her leg. Fear, come out. Fear, come out. Fear, come out. In Jesus' name. Fear, come out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come out. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Jesus, release me. Release Thank Sandy you. from this disability. Yes. Break Sandy off this disability. Yes. yes Father, her worry, her fear, and her unbelief yes, is Father, causing this me. healing to be blocked. Yes, Father, Heal. Jesus. 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 Okay, try it again. Sandy, come out. Sandy, come out. Worry and fear, come out of there. Worry and fear. Unbelief and doubt. Out. Come out. Heal. Heal. Be healed. Who's the next one after Sandy? Honestly, one of my biggest things is that I missed it really bad, and I know what? where God has called me. I've missed what? it. In 
many ways. I've just been like, I've gotten older and I'm, things have passed okay, me by. Now, I've, seen a lot, I've got a lot of regrets and stuff that I compromised. Yeah, no. What happens is uh, Christians blow their original destiny. Yes. They screw it up and it passes them. Yeah. But there's always a backup one. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. You have a backup destiny know, that fits in your age and your brother, Mike, system. I know that I do. And the enemy okay. has fought me tooth and nail. And I've given, yeah. I bowed down. I folded like a cheap suit. Okay, go ahead and repent. Come on. Come on. Go, devil. You got to tell the devil to go. He will not leave on his own. You got to tell him to go. Okay, YouTubers, listen. Go to the website and hit the teaching button. You've got to read these two articles How Satan Controls the Mind and Satan's Counterattack. You're going to get attacked within 48 hours of this service. The devil's going to attack you within 48 hours of this service. He's going to attack that lady there and try to put her back in a walker. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. He's going to attack you within 48 hours. Read that article, Satan's Counterattack. <laughs> Next Friday, here, 7 o'clock. Next Thursday, 7 o'clock. Healing, preaching, teaching, and deliverance here at the Deliverance Center. The last Friday of this month, the seminar on divine healing, the ins and outs of divine healing, why some people are healed, why some people are not healed. Last Friday of this month, free seminar, sign up on the website, hardcorechristianity.com. You must fight the devil. You cannot pray him out. Okay? Praying is good. But you pray first, then you fight. Praying over demons doesn't work. YouTubers, demons were flying out of people like bottle rockets tonight. The winter season is coming up. It's beautiful here. Please come for a visit. <laughs> if you have no money, if you are broke, you can stay at the healing house next door for free. We have a facility. We can house you for two or three days. These people here from out of state, this pastor's getting delivered. The other lady's getting delivered for fear spirits from Ohio. Okay. Pastors, ministers, doesn't matter who it is. Anybody can have spirits. Anybody can have demons. You open the door, they come in. You open the door, they come in. That's how they roll. You got to learn how the devil rolls. It's called spiritual warfare. How does he roll? All right. I'll be back here next Friday. Now. The second Saturday of November, I'll see you in Tucson. The third Saturday, I'll see you in Flagstaff for healing and deliverance services. Check the website. Second week of December, I'll see you at, on Skid Row in Los Angeles for healing and deliverance ser service. And I will see you next time.